New York Knicks run New York City. <laughs> Bing bong. It's a Knicks tape. They are Bro. big, big winners. One of the biggest winners, arguably the biggest winner um, to some people of free agency, even though their biggest move obviously came via trade. But like you mentioned earlier, the fit is so good. What about Mikel Bridges playing for the New York Knicks? Do you like so well? I like the fact that you telling me I got Mikel Bridges over here. I got OG over here and mm -hmm. like, bro, the defense is going to be crazy. I think that to me with this trade, right? Obviously, the fact that the chemistry is going to be on point, even for guys, like guys that don't haven't played together in the NBA. <laughs> right. <laughs> the fact that obviously these guys are all friends. You see what it did for Josh Hart, DiVincenzo, these type of guys. Like they're just going to be so locked in together. I think the fit is so perfect as a guy who can obviously you see what Mikel can do uh, when he has some opportunities offensively. But the fact that he's going to be played more similar to how he did in Phoenix to where he doesn't have to be. The, he's definitely not the guy. He's not even the number two over there. So he can kind of fall back and probably take more of a step up in the defensive side of the ball like how he was in Phoenix. Um, I think that fit is perfect in there. I know Tibbs love it because this guy don't miss games. So he's going to nope. be playing 40 minutes a night locked in. Um, so, but I also, all just say, I do think he fits that defensive culture he has over there. So that's absolutely perfect for him. Um, I, I just think they're going to be a really good overall team. And like, it's not like, like you look at the Mo Mikel Bridges trade. It's like, they're not trading for a superstar. They're not trading for Kevin Durant or nothing like that. But I think that he, this trade fits with the culture over there. It fits with the team and it fits with the way they want to play, um, to the point where, like to me, it's a no brainer. Like, it is a home run trade to mm -hmm. me. Like, I think that this trade, even if because I, I think the Celtics are more talented for sure, but the Knicks can be are well, not can be are built in a way to where they can play them as best as anybody. It's kind of like you know, right. how like Min Minnesota, right? With the Nuggets, yep. it's like Rudy Gobert, Cat, like, oh, you got two bigs. You're built to beat the Nuggets team. Like, this Knicks team can be built to beat the Celtics when you have a guy like Mikel and OG to where, obviously, they're not the same offensive players as Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. But defensively, especially with Mikel, like I said, not being not having to take on much of that scoring load, they can sit in that chair and really lock down and, like, give those guys as big of a problem as probably anyone in the league with this team along with the defensive scheme and everything. Obviously, you still have uh, Jalen Brunson doing his thing. Julius Randle's going to come back. I, it's perfect to me. And then I think also another big thing, too, is where it gives them so much depth to where, like, a guy like Josh Hart and DiVincenzo, who are, to an extent, kind of playing above their uh, their talent level a little bit. Not like, oh, to an extent. Yeah. <laughs> DiVincenzo I mean, was going ballistic some games, bro. I mean, it's the power of friendship, man. It's the, yeah. it's the power of just liking your team, liking your guys. But, no, nah, I agree. He, he definitely was playing over his over his, uh, over his skis a little bit. I guess that's the term to say. But this actually – Is what? That, I, I think that's the term. Over his skis. Is that the right term? Something like that. I don't know. I've heard that before. I could be wrong. I swear wow, that's okay. – I've heard that before. I I'll look heard it up that one. I swear – I'll look it up I before. Ain't I that. It sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I think um this is good at the fact that they're not just like banking on the fact that Josh Hart is gonna play that great, Devin Channel is gonna play that great to where they're gonna add um a guy like Mikael Bridges to where now that gives them even more depth with those guys being able to come off the bench. Um you still got Deuce McBride. You like you still it's a really deep team. So to me, absolutely A plus, like no brainer, because I mean most people, not most people, I mean Real, if you look at it and you're not really thinking of how the fit and everything was going to work, you might look at it and be like, oh, you traded four, what is it, five first round picks from Mikael Bridges. But reality, you, you got a window. You know what I mean? Your team is relatively not, I mean, I mean, I guess it's relatively young. It's like middle of the pack. It's not like, it's not an old team. It's not like a super young team. I think your window is now, basically. And I think mm -hmm. you seize your opportunity. So I love the trade 100%. You said it right there. Your window is now. If it sounds like overpay, if it is overpay, it doesn't matter. You go and get your guy because if y'all win a championship, nobody is going to care how many first round picks you gave up to get Mikael Bridges if you're holding the Larry O'Brien trophy. That's all that matters at the end of the day. So 
Um, yes, the Brooklyn Nets got an absolute haul. Um, and I think now this gets every asset from the Kevin Durant, tra Kevin Durant trade officially settled with them. I think it ended up with nine first round picks um, in total from essentially trading Kevin Durant for Mikael Bridges and then trading Mikael Bridges for even more first round picks. Um, so good on Brooklyn that they finally have made that decision to get out of teetering that no man's land going into full rebuild. Um, additionally, going and getting some of their picks back. Uh, picks back from Houston as well um, in some trades um, looking to try to set themselves up to be at the top of this next year's draft, which is supposedly supposed to be really, really nice. Obviously the guy like guys like Cooper flag um, projected to be coming out towards the top of the lottery next year. Um, where do you think OG and Mikel ranks among the best defensive duos in the league? Like off the top of my head, I think about like, Obviously, Drew Holiday, Drew and White, White. Mm -hmm. right? You got like Jaden Jimmy McDaniels, and Ann, right? Jaden and, and Rudy, or Jaden and Ant, whatever way you want to take. That. If you say duels like wing duels or just like defensive duels, I would just say defensive duels. Wing duels, I feel like, man, <laughs> this might be the one. To be honest, it, like it might be. Like I said, like Mikel when he doesn't have to be because he was like the guy in Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like so, like obviously anybody. It's, it's only a few players who can really be your number one option and also be an elite defender, like, like taking on that type of task. Um, so, like, him not having to do that in the offensive end, like, he, he'll he probably – nine times a he'll go back to being that elite-level defender that he was, like, in Phoenix. So, man, I mean, like I said, wing defenders, that could be – it legitimately could be could one. Be them. Uh, just overall duos, even that is, like – it's top three, I think. Like it's I off the three, yeah. no one if no one jumps to my head just like off the top of my head, like I, I think they're at least probably three. Like that, that's an insane <laughs> that's an insane like defensive duel right there. It's ridiculous. I mean, it, it, depending on the Mitchell Robinson situation, it looks like he might be gone, but now they've lost Hardenstein. I don't know, maybe they offer him a bigger deal, whatever the case may be. If he's there, you have him on the back end. Josh Hart is no slouch. You know, all these guys are going to play very, very aggressive, mm -hmm. give high uh, levels of effort on the defensive side of the ball with the Tibbs coach team. Snick's team is as much fun as they were to watch this past postseason. They are, like, somehow getting even more like what you would expect this Knicks team to be like. I don't know how they got more Knicks than this past year. They did, yeah. But – this team, this Knicks team is more Knicks than we've seen in a very, very long time. Yeah. Uh, super excited for them. They I are definitely one of the biggest winners uh, of this free agency period. I will say I agree, too. I think it's also like an A-plus trade for the Brooklyn Nets as well to get out of no man's land and getting your mm -hmm. pick back, which is a huge thing. Right. Instead of tanking when you – tanking when you don't have your pick makes no sense because you don't even reap the benefits of tanking. Right. <laughs> so getting your, your pick back is it's crucial. But, yeah, getting four first for Mikel Bridges, who, like, realistically, when you think about it, too, when a lot of players be like, yo, I want to go to this team, you're getting a – like, you're not getting the most value because mm -hmm. everyone knows he wants to go to this team. So still getting four, four first-round picks is absolutely huge. Um, and then, obviously, having a full-on direction, especially, like you said, in a deeper draft – or a good draft coming up, I think it's an A-plus trade for the Brooklyn Nets as well. Yeah, I think it's – it's – it's a very rare, I think, a trade on both sides. Like, right, both everybody involved is getting exactly what they need at this moment in time, um, mm -hmm. and that's going into their rebuild. And the Knicks looking to get that one piece that can get them over the top to potentially make a finals and or championship push. Um, so definitely love that for New York. Tell me a little something, KD. Don't you regret not coming to the Knicks? Don't you regret not coming to the 